Tommy Lee Jones, crankiest man in Hollywood, a reputation hard earned from years of glaring at people on the awards circuit, uh, not suffering fools gladly, and uh, generally looking like he wants to punch Jim Carrey every time he turns around. Uh, <laughs> yet Tommy Lee Jones, brilliant actor, Oscar winner, director and star of really a great sleeper hit that uh, Mark and I are both highly recommending that you see this weekend, The Western, The Holmesman. Mark, what do you think? I, I agree with you. I think it's a really, it took me by surprise how good it was, and maybe it shouldn't. Um, Tommy Lee Jones and Hilary Swank are the stars, and both of them are actors who are great when they're great. Oscar can winners. Also appear, Oscar winners, uh, but can also appear to sleepwalk through roles or be miscast sometimes. Um, and in this case, Tommy Lee Jones has a director who understands him, himself. Himself. Um, he Put up with his... Uh, with his cantankerous uh, uh, aspect. I was about to say something else. What, what, what were you going to say? Uh, something that we shouldn't uh, catch on video. That, oh, right. That appears right. on Oregon Live. It'll be in the director's cut. <laughs> That's right. We'll take it out in post. <laughs> um, but the plot of The Holmesman is, um, I thought, a little bit like True Grit. It's based on a book by um, Glennon Swarthout, who wrote some uh, novels in the 50s and 60s, including... Uh, a couple of myths matched. Uh, he wrote Where the Boys Are, and then he wrote a book, uh, also made a new movie called Bless the Beast and the Children. Hmm. But um, this one is uh, set in Nebraska in the 1850s. Uh, Hilary Swank plays uh, what was then called the spinster, um, an unmarried woman in her early 30s who can bust sod and keep a clean house and is sort of the conscience of the community. But... Um, other women in the neighborhood, you could say, are not doing well at all. Uh, three of them go crazy from um, the hard work. They are poorly married to, in one case, a psychopathic racist. And um, they go mad, uh, need to be returned to a church in Iowa and then sent off either to an asylum or to their families. Um, none of the men in the community have the spine to do it, so uh, Swank sets off on her own where she uh, encounters Tommy Lee Jones. Mark, pick it up from there. Well, you, no spoilers, to, please. No spoilers. You got it. Uh, he, he's, a, he's the scoundrel, a curmudgeonly scoundrel, who's, who's about to be hung for taking another man's claim. Uh, she finds him noose around his neck on his horse, and uh, enlists his, rescues him, and then and then basically blackmails him into into uh, accompanying her on this journey. And you know you can expect at this point that there's going to be this uh, relationship between the two of them that they become uh, unexpected pals in some regard. And that happens, but a lot of other things happen along and the way. That, that happens, are, but a lot a lot surprising. of other things happen that are surprising, yeah. interesting and uh, unusual for a Western. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that is getting attention, rightly so, is this movie's being called a feminist Western, and I think that's a compliment. Mm -hmm. um, Hilary Swank's character is an independent woman who can make it on her own, but given the times and the place, couldn't, and feels like she has to have a man. She uh, proposes in her own way to a man early in the movie who um, turns her down, tells her basically that she's too plain and too bossy, and so she uh, she gets told that she's plain about four different five times. Five different in this movie. times. You feel yeah. bad for the actress right. who is not a plain <laughs> right. woman she's necessarily, not plain. but she plays a plain woman really well <laughs> right. uh, here. And 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 there, well, she, it's feminist because of her character, and then these three women who are just lead these miserable lives, and and you know you understand why they're they they're trapped. Yeah, lunatics. right. And and I think. Tommy Lee Jones, the director and guiding force of this movie, is making a great point that as tough as it was on the fr on the frontier for men, women had it infinitesimally worse. Mm -hmm. And um, this movie, instead of like the westward migration of running into the usual rattlesnakes and fording rivers, they're actually moving eastward. They're going in a way back in time, mm -hmm. and um, mental. Stability or instability is another big theme that is really um, beautifully handled, I thought. Mm -hmm. And I think what it, what makes it work especially well is that you've, we have seen lots of westerns that try to sort of 
revise the legends or, or be progressive in some way politically or socially, and some of them work and some of them don't. This one works because it, it does that, but it also feels completely authentic of the time. People behave the way people would behave in these situations. They're not modern people stuck back in, in these uh, spots. Uh, well said, and um, this movie's not for the faint of heart. There's violence of unexpected uh, toward people you care about. Two more points I want to make. It looks absolutely beautiful. The cinematography by Rodrigo Prito, a veteran uh, DP in Hollywood, uh, gets the wide open Nebraska spaces. Uh, Jones, the director, favors long shots, uh, holding the camera still and letting the uh, you know mood in the scene build in. Also greatly abetted by uh, really a haunting, beautiful uh, music score by Marco Beltrami. Yeah, no, it's all around a well-made movie. Hopefully people will be able to overcome the sort of the bleakness of it, uh, which you can't work around, um, and, and go see it. Uh, you know, despite that, it's well worth seeing, definitely on a big screen, like you said. Absolutely. Um, we're sort of in a brief holiday lull here before the uh, Christmas movie Onslaught. Um, if you had a couple other recommendations before uh, the whole Unbroken Hobbit, you know, uh, avalanche the starts of come, the unbroken Hobbit, yes, yes. starts happening right around Christmas Day. If you had two other movies to pick this weekend, what would you say they would be? Two other movies. Well, I can think of two other movies the opening this week uh, that I could easily recommend. One is National Gallery, which is by the veteran documentary filmmaker Frederick Wiseman. It's a three-hour look behind the scenes of London's National Gallery, and uh, it really is fascinating, both watching the these really skilled uh, docents giving tours as well as the behind the scenes restoration process. Three hours might be a little much, but that's how Frederick Wiseman works and, and it ends up being this sort of really nice immersive experience that makes you appreciate the institution. Uh, the other one would be the revival of Hiroshima Mon Amour, uh, which is playing at uh, Cinema 21 here. Uh, great black and white cinematography. Uh, a movie that's maybe worth seeing more for its historical importance, but that you can still get stuff out of today. It's sort of a precursor to the French New Wave about a relationship between a French actress and a Japanese man in, with their, their sort of traumatic memories of World War II in the background is, I guess, the best way to summarize it. Sounds good. If, if I'll throw in a couple uh, holdovers. I know uh, Birdman has moved over to the Hollywood Theater. That uh, would be a good one if you haven't caught it yet. Also, the Jake Gyllenhaal movie Nightcrawler is still around. Um, that's it. We'll, we'll be back next week. Thanks for watching.